Your real estate investing expectations may look something like this, when in reality, they may turn out more like this. I'm a huge believer in using real estate investing to build your wealth, your net worth, and your passive income. But there are many misconceptions when it comes to being a real estate investor. In this video, I'll break down nine realities that may not line up with your expectations. Stick around until the end of the video where I'll share the most important thing you need to do in order to make your expectations a reality. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help a thousand people create a million dollars of net worth with real estate investing. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. Let's dive right in. Number nine, if you've ever watched a reality TV show about being a real estate investor, your expectations may be slightly out of whack which is ironic because it's called reality TV. In fact, it's usually the furthest thing from it. There always seems to be some sort of drama that comes up on every project. That's because drama makes for good television, but not every real estate transaction has major challenges. On the other hand, expectations when it comes to how long renovations take and how much they cost, based on TV shows, can be a stark contrast to reality. On TV, you do some demo, you come up with the plan, you come back after the commercial break, and you're ready for the big reveal. It can all be done in about 20 minutes. And don't even get me started on the budgets for most renovation projects on TV. They're usually less than half of what it actually costs. Don't get me wrong, I like the renovation shows as much as the next person, as I can get some ideas for laying out spaces and building materials, but remember that TV is not reality as an investor. The number eight expectation is that real estate investing is get rich quick. While I've seen many investors create tremendous wealth in a very short amount of time, the reality is that most successful investors I know are in real estate for the long term. The longer you are invested, the more time your money has to work for you. If you're expecting to start investing in real estate and be a millionaire overnight, you may get frustrated with how long it can take. Be patient, find a few strategies that work for you, perfect them, and then use them over and over again until you've achieved your goals. Number seven piggybacks on number eight, which is the expectation that the market will always go up. The real estate market is cyclical, which means it moves in a circle. It always has and it always will. Simply put, the real estate market is driven mostly by supply and demand. If the supply is low and the demand is high, that will drive pricing up. If supply is high and demand is low, that will bring real estate prices down. The length of each market cycle is not constant either. You can be in an up market for 10 years and in a down market for six months. On the contrary, you could be in a down market for 10 years at a time. I own property in Alberta and Ontario and the Ontario market has been rising steadily for the last decade. The Alberta market, on the other hand, has definitely been flat or in decline for the past five years. So the strategies you use in Alberta would be very different than they would be in Ontario. Learn how to analyze the real estate market, which will inform your decisions on when to buy and when to sell. The number six expectation is that real estate investing is easy. Many investors claim that they work two to three hours per week on their real estate investing portfolio. While this is definitely attainable, it takes work to get to that point. You don't just buy an apartment building that generates $5,000 a month of passive income without putting in significant work. I'm not saying you have to do it all yourself. In fact, I would recommend hiring people to do what they do best and sticking to what you do best. But the reality is the first few properties in your portfolio will require the largest amount of work. Even if you are a passive investor, there is still a good amount of due diligence that needs to be done on the potential opportunities in the beginning in order to protect your hard earned money. The number five expectation is that you can quit your day job and go full time in real estate. I see too many people leave their nine to five jobs a little bit early. My suggestion is to step away from your nine to five job when your passive real estate investing income matches or exceeds your salaried income. Leaving your day job can also have an impact on your ability to qualify for financing or getting at the equity in your home through a line of credit. So speak to your mortgage professional about when the best time to make that leap is. The number four expectation is that you have to manage your own properties. It's the one comment I hear over and over again, I don't wanna get that call at 2 a.m. when there's a leaky toilet. Whoever said that you have to take that call is a real estate investor. The reality is that could be taken on by your property management company. But the naysayers will say that they have to manage their own properties for the numbers to make sense and to have positive cash flow. To which I say, you're not investing in the right kinds of properties then. Even if you are managing your own properties, you should be allocating 10% per month for property management. 
The great thing about allocating 10% per month is that if you ever decide that you do want to pass off the property to a property manager, it won't affect your cash flow. The number three expectation is that your tenants will damage your property or not pay their rent. In the 19 years of me being a real estate investor, I've never had significant damage to any of my rental properties. If I did, I have an insurance policy to cover it. If you don't have tenant damage on your rental property insurance, I would highly suggest looking into it for the peace of mind when it comes to tenant damage. Will it cost more than a standard policy? Absolutely, but that's the cost of doing business. The number two expectation is the one that always makes me laugh, and that is that you can only have five mortgages before the banks will say no to more financing. There are some major banks that will not go beyond financing more than five properties in your personal name, but that doesn't mean that you can't get financing beyond that. What it means is that you may have to look at a different structure to purchase properties, such as a corporation, a family trust, or a limited partnership. If you take nothing else away from this video, remember this. You can always get financing on a property. It's just a matter of how much it's going to cost you and if it makes sense for your project. And the number one expectation is that you need a lot of money to get started as a real estate investor. The reality is that real estate does require money, but it doesn't have to be your own money. There are many great strategies for building wealth without having any of your own capital to bring to the table. For instance, wholesaling is a great way to make money without using any of your own money. You could also raise capital or you could joint venture on a property. So if money is the thing holding you back from being a real estate investor, it's not a prerequisite. If you don't have a lot of money to work with, I would suggest getting educated on the various strategies that are available to you. If you're interested in learning more about the courses that I offer teaching these various strategies, check out my website at darrenvoros.com. As promised, I wanted to give you a hack that I use to make sure my expectations match my reality. Focus on building your cash flow first and foremost before building your net worth. Market appreciation is great, but it doesn't pay the bills. So focus on building up your cash flow and cash reserves, and then you can look at some longer term strategies that have a potential upside, but may not be as liquid. That way you're not so reliant on money that is in longer term investments. If you're wondering which strategies build cash flow the quickest, you can use things like flipping properties, private lending, or apartment syndication. House hacking and the Burr strategy can also be great for recycling the same cash over and over again. Now, I'd like to hear from you. Have you experienced the situation in real estate investing where your reality turned out to be different than your expectations? Leave that in the comments section below along with any real estate investing related questions. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram to see regular progress on all of our projects. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next Tuesday.